Hello, so I'm here to talk to you about selling. And I want to give you, ooh, I want to give you a minute to think about what selling means to you. So how does it impact on your daily life? Do you have to do it as part of your job? Do you feel perpetually sold to? And do you find that uncomfortable? And while we're doing that, I just want to introduce you to me. So this is me when I was seven and I'm dressed as a mouse, um, and that is greaseproof paper that I'm wearing, in case you're wondering. Um, but I grew up to become a salesperson, which means that some of you will be experiencing some immediate mistrust of me and the things that I say, because I think sales has become a dirty word, and it's synonymous with coercion, manipulation, and sometimes even lying. But I want to tell you something that I truly believe, and that selling is the single most important activity that you can undertake. But for that, I think we really need to understand what selling is, because there's a very small part of it that's getting all the headlines. To me, selling isn't short-term financial gain. We need to push that to one side in order to really harness the power of it. Selling is simply the effective communication of an idea. And for this, it really means that people need to believe what you believe. This definition has two parts. So we're talking about effective communication and an idea. And we're going to deal with the idea first. I recently read a book by a guy called Yuval Noah Harari called Sapiens. And he talks about ideas as being the single thing that separates human beings from every other species on the planet. That is to say that we are the only species on the planet capable of imagining something that doesn't physically exist in front of us or doesn't exist at all. This is the power of an idea. And I'd like to say thank God that we're the only species that can do this because I think if cats could imagine things that don't exist in front of them and then communicate it to all other cats, we would be in grave danger. So, ideas. Every invention that has ever lived was once an idea. The culture that we live in today, it's an idea. There's physical manifestations of it all around us, but these are merely evidence that supports the idea. So back to me. And it's funny, because when you agree to do a TED Talk, they give you a, a booklet of do's and don'ts. And one of the don'ts is don't boast, I presume because it'll make the audience hate you. But I've already told you I'm a salesperson, so I've got nothing to lose. <laughs> um, but I started, I've always been good at selling. But in the last 12 months, I became great at it. And I really couldn't understand why, because I hadn't really changed any of my behaviors. So in the last six months, I decided to do a bit of reading, and I watched a lot of TED Talks to try and decipher maybe what some of my natural habits are. And hopefully, ironically, I'm not selling this to you. I'm just wanting to start a conversation, but help you guys to, to take these forward and maybe explore them for yourselves. So enough about me. What about you guys? So I want you to not think about selling business or product. I want you to think about selling yourself. And we've got a couple of examples here. Um, some will be easier leaps and some will be more difficult. So firstly, promotions and interviews. I think it's easy to understand how that will be selling yourself. You've got this job, you're not there yet. You've got this person that's gonna make the decision and then you've got you down here. You need to sell the idea of yourself in this position to this person. You need them to believe what you believe, that you're capable of performing this job role. The second one is the most wide-ranging and most applicable. Selling is the difference between management and leadership. Management is control of people and process. Leadership is the communication of a vision so that other people believe what you believe. Not only do they believe it, they own it. They want to make it happen. If any of you here lead a team, you run a business, or you hope to do any of these things, selling is the difference between management and leadership. We've got a few other examples as well. Some of them might be a little bit of a stretch for some of you. And the next one is friendship, uh, is lecturers and teachers. If we think about teachers, People here, I'm glad there's only about two teachers in the room because they'll be like, oh God, not, that's not selling. But it is the effective communication of an idea. And making friends. This one will be the biggest stretch for some people, especially if you're unable to separate short-term financial gain from 
the effective communication of an idea. But when someone meets you for the first time, you've got a very short window as to whether they'll want to get to know you, whether they'll want to invest their time and their emotional energy in getting to know you. So we've talked about what selling is, what gets in the way. And for me, it's really a lack of connection. So how do we better connect? And this is what I've spent the last six months working on and trying to understand, because I believe that successful selling, i.e. the effective communication of an idea, is 100% based on the ability con to connect with other people. And I think there are four key ways that we could do this. I think if selling becomes more based on, communicate, on effective communication and human connection, we lose this element of short-term financial gain, the oversell and under-deliver that we've become so familiar with. So number one, passion. If you can really communicate something passionately, people will listen. And this was the difference for me. I started a new job 12 months ago, and that's when it suddenly all changed. And that's because when I joined my company, I quickly came to realize that this company has a culture that is second only to Google, Apple, in terms of how it engages with its staff. The message and the vision from the top is absolutely incredible. It's communicated with passion. I believe what they believe. But the second point is authenticity. You can't be passionate if you're not going to be authentic about it, because then you're just enthusiastic. And that's cute, but it's not good enough. So authenticity. There was an excellent talk by a lady called Brene Brown. She's a shame researcher from Texas. It's called The Power of Vulnerability. It went viral. I would urge you to watch it. And in some of her material, she describes cultivating authenticity. But she gets a lot of kickback on this description because people say, well, if you're cultivating authenticity, surely it's inauthentic by its very definition. So I want to talk about accessing your authenticity because we all have it. We can all be authentic, but it takes a leap of faith and to remove your fear of vulnerability when it comes to being authentic. So number two, emotional intelligence. And we've had several business leaders come out over the last few years to say that they believe that emotional intelligence is actually more important than traditional IQ. And really, we can break down emotional intelligence into two different sections, by my definition. So first is introversion versus extroversion. A lot of people, you'll be thinking, oh, she's definitely an extrovert. But in terms of selling as the effective communication of an idea, don't believe that selling is the provision of the, in, of the extrovert. I would say it's actually more of an introvert skill, but we'll go on to talk about this later. I read an amazing book by a lady called Susan Cain called Quiet, and it's written from the introvert's perspective. So if you're an extrovert, I would highly recommend that you read it. But she believes that we all fall on this scale of introversion and extroversion. But she added another element for me. I had a conversation with someone when I was a teenager, and uh, they said something that was, I change my behavior depending on the company that I'm in. I'll change my vocabulary. I'll change the way that I talk. I'll change how I behave. And they said that that was inauthentic. And I struggled with this. I really did for years. But then I read Quiet. And she added another layer, which is whether you're a high self-monitor or a low self-monitor. So high self-monitoring is when you naturally, constantly review your behavior and change it and cultivate it for the people that are around you. And as we know, this was accused of in, as inauthenticity. But what Susan Cain said was that actually it was a mark of respect. You're creating a safe space for everybody in the room that is around you to allow them to express their passion or their authenticity. Instead of just steadfast being exactly who you are, you're creating a space for other people to be exactly who they are. The second part of this really substantiates the first, and this is self-awareness, but not self-doubt. If selling as the effective communication of an idea is getting people to believe what you believe, if you don't believe in yourself, you're falling at the first hurdle. 
Self-doubt can be one of the most paralyzing things that you can experience. So if you're ever going to doubt anything, doubt the idea. Don't doubt yourself. Third, this is one that I struggle with, listening. Um, if you've not by now read the classic text, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey, I would really recommend that you read it. Um, and he talks about habit five, and that is seek to understand, then to be understood. He discusses that human connection, we all have a need to be understood. It's one of the fundamental found, uh, foundations of human connection. But we're, if we're all talking, trying to be understood, then no one's listening. And he calls this the dialogue of the deaf, or the collective monologue. So I had an experience um, when I started this job. I had to do um, a psychometric test. And I'll never forget, there was one question. And it said, uh, when a customer is speaking to you, do you, and they're telling you a story, do you A, check your email? B, listen intently to what they're saying, or C, think of a funny anecdote that you can relay back to them. I, I didn't say it was a hard test, but we all know the answer's B. But C, oh, C really called out to me, because that's what I do. I think I'm hilarious, and so I'll always be thinking about a funny story. Um, so when I marked down, my boss came back to me and said, oh, you know, it's very good, it's very good, Megan, you're 90% classic high achiever. I was like, nine, 10% markdown? He said, yes, well, it was, it was for, li and he didn't even finish the word. He was about to say listening. Yes, 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 I know, I know, I'm not very good at listening. So I actually interrupted someone telling me I was bad at listening to say, yeah, I know, I'm bad at listening. So that was quite an interesting one for me, and I have a friend, and he is still a friend, um, who once said to me, Megan, the problem with you is that you're only ever waiting for the person to stop speaking so that you can speak. Oh, it was like being shot. But, you know, the truth will uh, first irritate you, but then it will set you free. But if I'm relaying a story back to the person that's speaking to me that has absolutely nothing to do with what they've just been telling me, it's clear I've not been listening. There's no connection there. There's no room for that. But if I'm telling a story back that relates to the story they've just told me, then what's that? That's empathy. And Brene Brown says that empathy is the thing that is the fundamental antidote to everything that stands in the way of human connection. That's saying, me too. And that is a really sacred space for people. Empathy is extremely important. Everything that stands in the way of human connection, which Brene Brown puts as shame, fear of vulnerability and judgment, and empathy can counteract all of these things. So at first, I asked you to forget about you know, selling business, selling product, and I'm gonna betray you a little bit here because I do want you to think about business. We've all got jobs. And what is a business? It's made up of people. We don't leave our emotions at the door as soon as we walk in. We're not robots. Isn't it interesting that the business leaders of the world are coming out to say that human connection, emotional intelligence, is more important than traditional intelligence? This is because we all have great ideas, but how can we get them out there? We don't have the full skill set. If you can effectively communicate your idea and your vision to others that can help you so that they believe your idea but they own it and they want to deliver it too, it becomes their idea, that's where the power really lies. So this is something that I've wanted to explore for a while, and it, I think it's starting to make sense, but I don't have all of the answers. I'm still on a bit of a journey with this. But what I would say is you really need to energize people. And you can't do this all the time because it's exhausting. But if you can knock it out of the park when it really matters, if you can pull your passion, your authenticity, if when you're delegating a task to someone, you can seek to understand what it is that they need before you communicate your needs, and if you can meet their need to be understood with empathy, then it will gain a momentum unlike anything I've ever seen, and it really could change your world. Thank you. <laughs>